We've only had the pleasure of speaking with Michael Poulsen, frontman for Volbeat, once, and it was in 2017 at Rock on the Range. I remember you had just become a father, and Metallica gifted you with this adorable little Metallica onesie, and I'm wondering, did your daughter ever get any use of it? I don't know if you remember it, but it was so cute. Yeah, you know, the thing was, they gave me a whole bag of uh, Metallica baby clothing, (laughs) Yeah. And I was so excited about it, uh, and I couldn't wait to get home and show it to my, my girlfriend. And you know what? It got stolen in the airport. When I came home, somebody had opened up my bag, and they took all the baby clothes. And I was like, who the, what person is, kind of person is doing that? Come on. So I was kind of miserable about that. And when, when Metallica heard that, they just made two bags for me. So it, it was a win-win situation. <laughs> That's a horrible person. You're right. You are a different kind of evil if you're doing that. And at least you got a double dose of Metallica goodies. So that works. Um, I started that because um, there's a young boy on the cover of Rewind, Replay, Rebound, the band's seventh studio album. Also a song on the record called When We Were Kids, which is one of my favorites. Do you think you could have written that song and others if you were not a father? You know what? I don't know because it's, uh, it's, it, it's weird, you know, how much reality really becomes more in your face when you get kids. The thing is, of course, I had suddenly, I was reflecting so much on my past and then my childhood. So there's definitely a lot of stuff in the lyrics that I probably couldn't have been writing if it wasn't because that I became a daddy. When it comes to the music, you know, I still believe that's the natural of me of of writing but the thing is when certain words come up in the lyrics there's certain emotion attached to it and that that could have a certain impact on the music too so i would say yes and at the same time i will say no but i just think that's a good balance in it yeah okay yeah i i could see that leviathan is yeah. the band's uh, latest single again youth coming into play what can you tell us about the lyrical content and how that song came together uh the song uh happened in the rehearsal room suddenly rob was just i think he was trying to find his sound on the amp and he was playing this riff the opening riff and i said hey continue playing that riff in a loop that that sounds really great and I took it home with me, and then I was working around the song, and then suddenly Leviathan was born, and it has great energy that I really like, and um, the whole lyric theme is taking out of a young kid's mind or mindset or perspective that he wakes up every night, look out the window, and he believes he can see the big Leviathan, and uh, he's also pretty much aware of that the whole world, or the world is not maybe not the most nice place to be in. There's a lot of bad stuff going on in the world, as a kid would put it. So, and I think a lot of young kids wake up, especially boys, and they want to be supermen or superheroes, and they want to clean up all the, the bad things in the world. And it's the same thing with this kid, and he kind of makes a deal or a pact with Leviathan that they should come up with a kind of a nice game plan to clean up the world so it becomes a better place every morning when he wakes up. Do you see any of yourself in those lyrics? Like, was that your perception of the world when you were growing up? I know you grew up in a small town. Yeah, you know, uh, I definitely believe that, you know, to to be able to sit down and write a lyric like that, where there's definitely some deeper stuff hidden between the lines, you have to dig a little bit deeper into yourself and how you're doing or thinking as a child. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. Okay. Pelvis on fire, not related to youth, unless, you know, making babies falls into that category. But that has to be just one of the best song names, best songs ever, given your love for Elvis well documented. You've talked about how Sweet Caroline, one of the songs that changed your life, We get, you know, a nod to Elvis in this song. How did you come up with that name, that song? Was the goal just pure fun on that one? Oh, I'm a huge uh, Elvis fan. You know, um, I got him tattooed different places on my body. And I grew up with all this music from the 50s. So Elvis has been a huge impact on me and a big reason for why I'm starting playing music. So uh, 
yeah, it was it's, it's definitely something special for me. You know, even when I was a very, very young kid, I would sit down and I would be watching live performances from Elvis on videotape. And my mom would come into the living room and she said, I was sitting with a black pin to try to dye my hair black like Elvis. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so it goes way back. Um, but the, the track, Helm is on Fire, I'm glad that you say that's a lot of fun in that because that's what the whole thing is about because there's a lot of things, lyrics on that new album that's, you know, it, kind of serious, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes mm-hmm. things can be a little bit too serious or you just need to loosen up a little bit and shake it all around and that's where a rock and roll song like Pelvis comes in where where the lyrics are a little bit more fun and just straight out rock and roll. Yeah, one of the many reasons why that track really stands out off uh, off the record. Uh, I am curious, do you think any modern day band musician could have the effect on you that like an Elvis or a Johnny Cash had on you? Or is it somehow tied to discovering these people when you were young? Like, could that happen now as an adult Michael Poulsen? Uh Mm, that's a really, really interesting question, and it's a it's a very good question actually. Uh, that would, that's a question that's gonna keep me awake all night. So <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> uh, you know what? It, it's like the thing is when you, and you know what I'm talking about when we are kids. Mm-hmm. There's so much innocence, and the whole world is so full of new colors, and you're naive and. Uh, you know, you're just on a, on an adventure all 24-7. And uh, that's something really nice about that. But what I really like, it happens sometimes when you're in your adult life that you meet people and you suddenly become 12 or 13, 14 years old again. And you're asking yourself, what the f*** is going on in my body? Why are you reacting like that? I love that feeling. I love it. You know, I remember first time I met Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath, and uh, uh, he was just walking around backstage area at some festival. And first, I was pretty cool. I said, "Man, that's that's Tony Iommi." And when I heard myself said, "That's Tony Iommi," I I, I repeated said, "That's f-ing Tony Iommi," and I uh, I became that twelve. 13, 14 year old kid again who was shaking and didn't know how to say anything. And that's amazing. So I think we can still meet people that can have that kind of impact on you, which I think is great. But that's just also a certain thing because you, you get the experience in life, how to deal with certain things. That uh, That's why we appreciate our childhood so much if we have a good childhood, but there are certain memories that just really, really mean something to you. And it's because we can recreate those kind of feelings again. We can try and sometimes we get the smell of it or we get a sense of it or we get a feeling of it, but it's different. But it it, it happens in, in small pieces, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Well, Tony Iommi definitely has that effect on everybody. I remember seeing him backstage <laughs> at some festival and everybody yeah. was watching him like, there he is. There's Tony Iommi. So yeah, that, yeah. yeah. let's switch gears to Volbeat's official bootleg series. It's not new to Volbeat, but there might be some who are unfamiliar. So what is the official bootleg series all about? And the most obvious question, why is now the time to bring it back? It's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just a nice thing to put out so our fans who are, who've been paying uh, money for tickets or whatsoever that has anything to do with Wolby, but that we can give them something while we're waiting for the green light to go out and play all the shows. A lot of the hardcore fans, they've seen everything on YouTube. You know, they know everything. So for us, you know, this is something you probably haven't seen or you haven't seen in this quality or in this in, in this version. So it's just great for us to give that to the fans and they can uh, sit down and enjoy that until we are back on the road. I want to talk about going back on the road in a minute. But first, what do you look for when deciding what live performance to release? And how do you feel about seeing yourself on stage? You know how sometimes actors are like, oh, I can't see my work. Ugh. How do you feel about <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah. I'm also one of those guys who doesn't see anything 
with ourselves on YouTube or anything else. It's just when I played the show, it's in the past, and I like to keep that as a memory. I like to walk off stage, and you know the feeling that I have when I walk off is the you know that's that's the feeling I'm gonna stay with because you cannot recreate anything like that looking at certain stuff on YouTube or listening to an audio file or anything. It's, it, it's not the same. So what's the reason? Uh, so for me, it doesn't make any kind of point. Uh, of course, you have to go way back where suddenly YouTube was there and, and you could like, wow, see yourself on stage. And that was quite interesting. But I must admit later on, when we start touring, uh, so much and have so many shows that YouTube was just a, a, a normal thing like water. It, it, it didn't became, you know, it didn't become interesting for me anymore. It was something I enjoy it when I'm off when, when I'm on stage, and then it's further to next show. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm I'm one of those guys who who actually doesn't watch my own stuff. You're not into watching it. And how do you decide, is it up to you what actually gets released as part of the official bootleg series or is that in someone else's hands? I do get some uh, certain links and uh, the thing is, you know, I could easily just, oh, no, that doesn't sound like, oh, that's a, oh, that's a, <laughs> right. that's a mistake on the guitar or, oh, I'm out of tune there, but that's the whole thing of playing live. So I, I would rather just say, you know what, if you find to our management or whosoever comes up with the clip, say if if you found that clip and you find and, and you think it's good, put it out. Because if, if I'm gonna look at it too much, I will start saying, oh, maybe the snare drum will be a little bit high, maybe this and that, and then you kind of ruin the whole the whole thing because it's it's meant to be like that. So it's and and again, if I remember the show and I was at that. That was not how it was like, you know. I'm not gonna sit and have a, a different feeling. Certainly, uh, one or two years after. So um, these days, I'm just saying, you know, put it out. Let the fans have it. You know, it's uh, it's their thing. Not overthinking it too much. I, I, it kind of reminds yeah, me of yeah. that one time. I don't remember where you said it, but you said there's no such thing as perfection. And if you do 500 takes, it loses its soul. So it, it kind of ties into that thinking in a way. Exactly. Yeah. You should be halfway through a spring tour right about now, taking a little break before hitting Virginia Beach. Those dates, of course, have been rescheduled. What's the hardest part of that reality? Like for smaller bands, it's the financial hit and that that might be a consideration. But what concerns you the most about having to put off shows? It's, you know, what I'm mostly concerned about is my family. You know, uh, we have certain family members. We all have that who is up in age and, you know, it, you know, you have to take care of them. You have to take care of the older people and basically we have to take care we have to take care of each other no matter how old we are so for us of course it's bomber not being able to go out and tour you know what we will be all right we will survive there'll be shows later right now i'm just happy that my family is doing good my friends are doing good the people that i know around me is doing good and uh, hopefully it's also a wake-up call for mankind to think a little bit deeper how we should treat each other and the world. You know, we can all, including myself, learn a lesson or two about this. If, if we're going to learn anything, I don't know. But yeah. hopefully we, we will. Uh, so my concern is just that we cannot take life for granted. You know, every morning you wake up, you have to try to do your best to actually appreciate it as much as possible. Uh, and uh, because you don't know what's going to happen. You know, the coronavirus came out of nowhere and suddenly, bam, the whole world is closed down. And it's like, where did that came from? It's yeah, crazy. It's crazy. Um, so I'm not thinking too much about all the money that we are losing, even though that's, that's sad, but it's, it's just money and you know we'll be able to earn money a little bit later when when the world is doing better so for me it's more important that i know 
that my family and my friends and the people around me are doing good. I don't know that we learned anything from 1917's massive pandemic. I don't know if we're going to learn anything yeah, exactly. from that. We forget, you know. Exactly, and that that's why, you, you you know, you can be concerned about that. It's not like we didn't have anything like this before because mm-hmm. we had things that were even more bad than this. And mm-hmm. as, you, as you said it, I don't know how much we learned about <laughs> that. And it's just... Sad. Again, shows that mankind, uh, man, we, we need to, to, to step up, but how the f*** do we do that? Starts at the top, right? Or does it start at the bottom and make its way up? We'll find out, hopefully. Yeah. We'll see. Um, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll wrap on this one. Are you guys waiting to see how this COVID-19 situation is going to evolve over the next few months to announce new dates? I feel like some bands announce the rescheduled dates prematurely, and they might have to go back to round three. You know what? Uh, every day is a new day, and there's new info every day from our management. And uh, you know, just by turning on the television, uh, you know, uh, the thing is, right now, uh, we're just waiting, like everybody else, to get the green light to go out and and do what we're supposed to do. Uh, so that's not much to say. You know, um, I know that uh, certain promoters are trying to reschedule big shows and smaller shows and tours and everything. And that is the same thing for us, you know, certain things uh, are being worked on being rescheduled and we're trying to move uh, the clutch tour. And, um, but basically we're just sitting and waiting like everybody else to, to get the green light. Yep. That's the state of the world. All right. Many thanks. Michael Pulson, front man for Volby continued health to you. And of course to your family as well. Rewind, replay, rebound, available everywhere for your listening pleasure, and we'll keep you posted on those touring dates when we learn more. Thank you, Michael, for your time. Much appreciated. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.